In my last video, I talked about Tor, and I said that using Tor properly means that you are anonymous. On that note, this seems like as good a time as any to talk about Tor, what it is, and how to use it properly. If you're watching this video, feel special because I actually don't talk about this on my website. Let's start at the beginning. What is Tor? Tor stands for the Onion Router. Tor was created in the mid-1990s by the U.S. Naval Research Lab as a way for spies to communicate securely with the U.S. while being outside of the U.S. Later, it was turned over to the public sector and taken over by the nonprofit Tor Project in 2002 and has since become a very popular open source protocol for anonymous internet usage. So it was created by the government, but it's open to anyone. And these days it's open source and anyone can run their own node. So what exactly is it? How does it work? Let's take an example. And we're going to use five people, Bob, person A, person B, person C, and Alice. Let's say Bob wants to write a letter to Alice, but he's worried about surveillance. He wants to give this letter to Alice anonymously. So here's what Bob does. Bob puts the letter in an envelope and he gives it to person A. Person A hands the envelope to person B, who hands the envelope to person C, who delivers it to Alice. It sounds complicated, but here's what we just did. Bear with me. Person A only knows that the letter came from Bob and went to person B. He doesn't know where it's ultimately going. Person B does not know Bob or Alice, and all he knows is he got the letter from person A and he gave it to person C. Person C doesn't know that the letter came from Bob. He got it from person B and he's giving it to Alice. So no one single person knows everything. Now, if we're gonna put that back into Tor terms, person A is what's known as an entry or guard node. This is the first node that you connect to. Person B is a middle node. Person C is an exit node and they are the most important and most sensitive kind. In this scenario, you are Bob as the person using the Tor network and the websites you're visiting are Alice. The website doesn't really know any information about you. They just know that person C or the exit node is who's visiting. Because of all the jumping around in the different relays, the more people that use Tor, it's harder for you to stand out and it's harder for a threat actor to track you across all those nodes. It is possible, but it is very expensive and difficult. Do you need to use Tor? Honestly, for most people watching this, the answer is no. Most people will be totally fine using a privacy respecting browser and a VPN. And honestly, most of you are probably not going to want to use Tor because a lot of websites don't work with Tor. A lot of banks block Tor. A lot of really popular websites like health websites block Tor, which is frankly ridiculous. They have no reason to. Sometimes it can be really slow. It's not as slow as it used to be back in the day, but it's still kind of slow. Most people probably don't want to use it. However, there are times that you may want Want to use Tor. For example, if you're researching a highly sensitive topic like health questions or controversial issues, maybe you want to know more about a political issue, some people want to use Tor because they don't want those targeted ads showing up all the time. You may also need to use Tor if you're living in a country that has censorship. Tor is notoriously good for bypassing a censored internet. Last but not least, you can use Tor for pretty much anything that doesn't actually require you to log in. If you're looking up the Wikipedia page for David Duchovny. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of X-Files lately. Now, here's some disclaimers about Tor that you need to know. First off, I strongly discourage sending all of your traffic through Tor. Most people watching this video are going to be using a mainstream operating system like Windows or Android or iOS. And when you're sending everything through Tor, you run the risk of sending identifying information like telemetry and serial numbers and things like that, which therefore makes you unique. They can track you despite everything you're doing. My second disclaimer is that I strongly recommend you only use the Tor browser. It is possible to use Brave and Firefox and other browsers, but the strength of Tor comes from everyone looking the same. Last but not least, sucks I have to say this, but I say this all the time, don't do anything illegal. Tor is also known as the dark web and is often maligned by the media as being a haven for drug dealers and child sexual abuse content. Those things do exist. I'm not saying they don't, but that's not all that's there. There's good content. There are news sites that run Onion Mirror there are even social media sites, plus all the other same websites that you would normally access on any other browser. You can reach those too. You're not limited just to dark web websites. However, if you go into those dark corners, you are playing with fire. You can get caught, and honestly, you probably will be. Like I said, it's hard to track a person through Tor, but if you cause enough problems, they will find you. If you've listened to this video this far and you've decided that I'm really interested in Tor, I wanna check it out, I wanna play around with it, I'm only gonna use the browser and I'm not gonna do anything illegal, how do you use it? Step one is to go to torproject.org. This is the official website of the Tor. 
Step two is to download the Tor browser for whatever device you are on. And it's really that simple. You'll boot it up. The first time you connect, it'll ask you if you live in an uncensored area where you can just directly connect or if you need to use a bridge. The biggest tip to make sure that you're actually using Tor anonymously is to never log into any of your accounts. Treat Tor as a completely separate identity. If you do something on Tor where you want to log in and participate, I recommend creating an entirely new account and never log into that anywhere except Tor. If you do log into anything, make sure that you check for that HTTPS and make sure the website is correct. Remember, these exit nodes are largely run by volunteers, which means in theory, somebody could be trying to hijack your traffic and steal your credentials. This is relatively rare, but it is something to worry about. This does not apply to dot onion links, which are dark web websites. Some companies will still create HTTPS certificates for those sites just to make you feel better, but they don't really need them. If you want to use Tor and do your part, the more people that use it, the more the people that need it just kind of blend in. So next time you're just looking up something random on your computer, go ahead and use Tor, do your part, make the, the network a little bit more crowded with noise so that the people who need it don't stand out as much. If all of this has just left you more confused, then just forget the last few minutes because at the end of the day, Tor is not necessary, but it can be very helpful. And by using it yourself, like I said, you help create noise that helps other people stay more hidden. For more information about Tor, you cannot find that on my website because again, I don't really talk about it. I don't think it's something most beginners have to worry about. If you still have questions, you can join my matrix room or you can contact me and all that is on my website, thenewoil.xyz.